we witness 19 rings being manufactured at the start of the movie Lord of the Rings Part 1 and 2. These are extremely potent rings. Among the 19 rings, three are given to elves who are immortal and wise. Dwarves who resided in the hilly area were granted seven rings. Mountain artisans was another name for them. Humans are granted seven rings, the most powerful of which require the most power. These are extremely potent rings. Whoever controls these rings wields considerable power. They must all work together to keep them safe. One more ring was manufactured with fraud, therefore the ring-making procedure isn't complete. Saruman, the Dark Lord, has developed an incredibly powerful ring. The power of this ring surpasses that of all other rings. By doing so, Dark Lord intended to seize the Middle East. Humans and elves battled the army of the Dark Lord in Mordor. They were successful in this, but the Dark Lord's army was formidable. The rings are taken by a king's son who chops off Dark Lord's fingers. As a result, Dark Lord transformed into a spirit and vanished with his army. The king has been corrupted by the Dark Lord's terrible ring. He maintains the ring instead of destroying it. Some people have assassinated the king as a result of the ring. The ring has been lost in the water for 25 years. The ring is discovered by Gollum one day and he maintains it for five centuries. Then, one day, Gollum's ring goes missing and a hobbit discovers it. Bilbo Baggins is the name of the character who holds the ring without knowing its past. After 60 years, Bilbo celebrates his 111th birthday. His old pal Gandalf also appears. He announces that he is leaving the Shire on an adventure on his birthday. Meanwhile, Gandalf is aware that Bilbo is in possession of the Dark Lord's ring. Bilbo sets out on a quest after leaving the ring with her nephew at his home. Gandalf's nephew, Frodo, arrives. Gandalf then departs to learn the history of the ring, leaving it in the hands of Frodo. He is aware that the Dark Lord's minions have approached Gollum. After being tortured, Gollum divulged two words, Shire and Baggins. After learning of this, Gandalf travels to Frodo. He sends Frodo to Bree, his friend's village. He pays a visit to his pal Saruman. While there, he is aware that Saruman is likewise corrupted. He has joined the Dark Lord's army. One of his subordinates, Nazgul, has been dispatched to find Frodo and assassinate him once they meet. Saruman invites Gandalf to join the Dark Lord's army. After Gandalf rejects them, they fight. For a long time, Gandalf was unable to confront Saruman. Saruman captured his magical spell and used it to imprison him. Frodo and his companion Samwise arrive on the scene, where they encounter two other hobbits. Meanwhile, as Nazgul appears, Frodo and his comrades hide under a tree. Because Nazgul is so close by, after becoming uncontrollable, Frodo begins to wear the ring. Sam, on the other hand, diverts Nazgul's attention by halting him. Late at night, Nazgul tracks down Frodo and his companions. After escaping Nazgul, they come aboard a riverboat. Frodo, on the other hand, chooses to remain in the Shire. He gets into the boat to get away from the Nazgul and survives. They depart, abandoning Nazgul. Frodo discovers that Gandalf has been away for six months when they arrive in Bree. He sat there contemplating what they should do. Meanwhile, the ring's power has an effect on Frodo. After growing uncontrollable, he collapses. While recovering the ring, it becomes trapped in his finger. Frodo vanishes from the scene. Because of Frodo's use of the ring, Nazgul is aware of his situation. When Frodo wears the ring, he is terrified when he removes it. Frodo is taken by Strider, a ranger. He claims he couldn't wait any longer for Gandalf. The army of the Dark Lord is on its way to assassinate him. Strider hides Frodo and his friends from the Nazgul before they arrive. He informs Frodo that they are the servants of the Dark Lord. They'll keep searching for Frodo until the ring is discovered. Strider has them all in his possession and is en route to Riverdale. They stay for the night at the summit of the mountain. After handing them the blades, Strider sends them off to inspect the area. Because Frodo is sleeping, the other hobbits light the fire. As a result of the fires, the Dark Lord's army appears. When the army arrives, all of the hobbits are left behind. They reach out to Frodo who is perplexed by the ring. While he is wearing the ring, Nazgul observes him. While wearing the ring, the Dark Lord Commander comes up behind Frodo and stabs him with his sword. The Strider comes in the meantime and begins fighting the Dark Lord army. He attacks the Nazgul's boldly with his sword and kills them all. Later on, he and Frodo depart from there. On the other hand, we encounter Saruman, who is in charge of the Dark Lord's army, starts making weapons. Arwen, an elf who is a Strider's lover, is discovered. She comes across Strider and Frodo and saves Frodo before taking him with her. After saving herself from the Nazgul, 
She walks across the ocean. Later, she casts a magic, and the Dark Lord's army vanishes in waves due to the potency of the spell. Arwen arrives in Rivendell and immediately takes Frodo. Her father administers medication to him. When Frodo awakens later, he notices Gandalf, who has been rescued by an elven eagle of great size. Frodo tells Bilbo that he meets him in Rivendell. He won't be able to have a voyage like his, because the ring is safe here. He wants to return home. Arwen's father arranges a meeting for them. Humans, elves, and dwarfs are all welcome. According to Gandalf, they can trust mankind to destroy rings. Arwen's father does not trust her because of the king, as we witnessed in the start. In exchange for the ring, he has surrendered his life. The action moves at a brisk pace. At Rivendell, he meets Arwen. Strider is revealed to be the king's son at this point. He took a step back after being terrified of all of these things. Arwen now hands over her magical necklace to Strider and chooses death. She was able to live a normal human life with Strider as a result. At the council meeting, no humans, dwarfs, or elves were willing to destroy the ring, because everyone thinks it's the same thing as death. Strider is revealed to be Aragon, the true king of Gondor. Frodo is now planning to take the ring's destruction into his own hands. Humans, dwarves, and elves are all ready to defend him at this point. Bilbo gives Frodo his sword sting and a tunic made of the chain before departing. Chains were used to make this. Gandalf, Frodo, and Samwise are now on their way. This means, Aragon, that Strider and his companions are on their way to Mordor. As they journey, they notice Saruman is keeping an eye on them with spy birds. As a result, they veer off in the wrong direction. Saruman, however, hits them there with the help of a storm. It's impossible for them to get out of there. When they can't see, they move through mines. They learn that all of the dwarfs had passed away. Later, Frodo is kidnapped by a weird creature that appears from the sea. His hobbit comrades first save him but Aragon and the elves eventually defeat the creature. They battle and save Frodo. Since the beast was going to devour Frodo, they all banded together to save him. The dwarf's book Gandalf is aware that the Dark Lord's army is pursuing them. In the meantime, a skeleton fights with Frodo's companion and falls into a well. As a result, the Dark Lord's army knows where they are and attacks them. They try to stop them by closing the door. However, the fact that they were able to get in by shattering the door was extremely impressive. They're up against a lot of competition when they're all together. It was difficult for them to fight against the Dark Lord's troops. Meanwhile, in the midst of the conflict, a strange monster appears. The elf attacks with an arrow after sitting atop the monster's head, but it's pointless since the creature is pursuing Frodo. Aragon attempted to save Frodo when the monster was about to kill him. He tries to battle the beast but he is dragged down and attacked by it. They all fight the monster simultaneously after defeating the Dark Lord's troops. They defeat the monster and return to Frodo. Despite the fact that Frodo is unharmed, they are anxious that he may have perished. It's because they've all noticed Bilbo's chained crafted clothing. In the meantime, they can hear horses. As they approach the bridge, the Dark Lord's army begins to pursue them. They are surrounded on all sides after going ahead. The aspect that is astonishing is that the army does not harm them. They then flee in a terrifying manner. Meanwhile, Gandalf issues a warning. They all flee along the perilous roads, believing that a demon is approaching. To cross, they must now make a long jump. The Dark Lord's army, on the other side, begins to attack them. They all take off, except Aragon and Frodo, who stay behind. The soil under them suddenly collapses, and they both leap to safety. Gandalf now brings him to a halt and sends them all across the bridge so he can fight the demons. The struggle between Gandalf and the monster has begun. After conquering the monster, Gandalf seems to have led him back into the world. Gandalf's feet are immediately grabbed by the demon, who pulls him away. They are all set free, though Gandalf's death has left them heartbroken. They all started crying. It was a moving experience. They go on till they reach a forest, where a powerful witch reigned. Her subjects were eventually apprehended. They lead them to the house of the White Witch. She informs Frodo that he is the only person capable of completing the assignment. A member of their squad will also attempt to steal the ring. The focus shifts to Saruman who has amassed a formidable army. He dispatches an army to Frodo and his companions in order to discover more about them. Frodo and his companions, on the other hand, go by boat to their destination, taking advantage of Frodo's isolation. Boromir, one of their team members, attempts to steal the ring from him, as predicted by the White Witch. Frodo, on the other hand, vanishes when he puts the ring on. When Frodo removes the ring, he falls to the ground. Frodo is terrified of Aragon when he arrives. Aragon, on the other hand, promises him that he will protect him till the end, until he destroys the ring. That is, Frodo's sword becomes blue all of a sudden. They are well aware that they are about to be attacked. Aragon dispatches Frodo, 
who joins the troops in battle. Aragon is up against a formidable foe. He kills them all one by one with his sword. His other relatives join him in the fight and fight alongside him. Frodo's pal requests that he hide around them. They do notice, though, that Frodo prefers to go it alone. They battle the pursuing evil army, and Frodo retreats. Aragon, dwarfs, and Boromir on the other side fight that army. An evil army surrounds Frodo and his companions. Boromir protects them after they arrive, but the leader strikes Boromir. Boromir has been shot through the heart like an arrow, but he fights on. After beating Boromir, they take Frodo's companion with them. Their army's commander intended to assassinate them. Boromir, however, is rescued by Aragon as soon as he arrives. Aragon is at odds with the army's commander. Aragon confronts him and, in the end, beheads him with his sword. Boromir later dies after entrusting Aragon with all of Gondor's responsibilities. We see in the film's last scene, on the boat, Frodo and his companion are seen living for Mordor. Everyone else, on the other hand, departs to save Frodo's companion. Frodo and Sam will travel further on their next expedition. The journey ahead of them is treacherous, with towering mountains. There is a vast maze there, but this time they weren't alone. It was Gollum who was pursuing them. He didn't have anything else in his life other than this ring. He was enthralled by the ring and wished to possess it. While Frodo and Sam are sleeping, Gollum appears. Frodo awakens, and he tries to grab the ring. He drags Gollum away. Gollum, Frodo, and Sam fight each other. At the end, Frodo keeps his sword around Gollum's neck. Because he is scared, Frodo holds Gollum as a captive. He says these in order to release me. Frodo's friend Sam tells him that letting him go could put him in danger. He has the ability to murder us at any time of day or night. But Gollum apologizes to him. Sam does not believe in him and Frodo has little faith in him. Frodo inquires of Gollum about the best course of action. Yes, Gollum knows where they are going and how to get there. They might be able to destroy the ring if they go there. Saruman, on the other hand, appears to have formed a new army. Two hobbits were being held as hostages by his army's warriors. They were Frodo's acquaintances. On the other hand, Aragon and his troops are pursuing them. They were able to save these two hobbits as a result of this. Saruman and his army attack Rohan's domain, so that they might obtain fuel and timber for weapon production. The monarch of Rohan was under the authority of Saruman and his assistant. Their king banished his nephew from the throne. He was raising his voice against King Saruman for this reason. Frodo and his companion, on the other hand, have been kidnapped by the army. They attempt to prepare them as a meal but another army arrives later. That was the army of the Dark Lord. They don't want to hurt these hobbits. As a result, the two armies start attacking one another. Both hobbits depart after taking advantage of the circumstance. Meanwhile, the nephew of the Rohan Kingdom attacks that army. In the morning, Aragon encounters the army of the Rohan Kingdom's nephew. He inquires of them about the two hobbits. They discover that the army soldier has been burned to death. He claims they will be able to look for hobbits once they arrive. Nonetheless, they should hold out hope for survival. They might have perished along with them. When the kingdom of Aragon arrives, after being rescued, he sees that both hobbits have fled into the forest. However, when two hobbits come in a forest, they are attacked by a live tree. The tree appeared to have bestowed them upon Saruman. Gollum, on the other hand, puts his life on the line to bring Frodo to Mordor. Frodo tries to help Gollum when they stop for the night to rest. He tries to remind Gollum of his actual identity. He understands that Smeagol was his real name. He was a hobbit before obtaining the ring. They are being pursued by a black shadow throughout this period. That was done while riding on the back of a massive dragon. Frodo, Sam, and Gollum are now sheltering in a bush from the dragon. The ring now has influence of Frodo, and he's trying to force himself to wear it. Frodo's pal Sam tries to intervene. The cyclist exits by passing through the Black Gate. Aragon and his men, on the other hand, are ambushed as soon as they enter the forest. He's mistakenly identified as Saruman, although he's actually Gandalf. He believes he was hurt after defeating the demons, but he was saved, and he was sent to Middle-earth with immense powers to protect it. Gandalf informs them that the hobbits have been dispatched to a safe haven. He went out for Rohan's kingdom with Aragon and his companions. Frodo, on the other hand, is sent to the Black Gate by Gollum. They do, however, see the Dark Lord's army while defending the gate. Meanwhile, the soldier's gate opens, allowing them to enter. When a cliff crumbles, Sam falls. Frodo makes an attempt to free his companion. They wrap themselves in a cloth after spotting soldiers. Frodo and his companion make an attempt to unlock the gate, but Gollum comes to a halt and cautions him that continuing is dangerous. Frodo, who has faith in him, Request him to show him another road. Gandalf arrives in Rohan's kingdom and liberates the monarch from Saruman's grip. Saruman attacks him, but Gandalf's strength has risen. He manages to rescue the king from his grasp. 
That king is enraged and attempts to assassinate Saruman's aide, but Aragorn comes to a halt, saying he'll pass on Saruman's message to them. The king is distraught when he learns of his son's death. Gandalf requests that he accompany him to the war and prepare for it. The king, on the other hand, is opposed to the battle. He no longer wishes to cause harm to his people. He intends to relocate his people to a safer location. Aragorn and his allies safely transport the king's troops to a new site. The king's niece is impressed by Aragorn. Aragorn fixes a horse and then requests a free horse. By claiming that this horse has fought in numerous wars, Aragorn has a great bond with the king's niece, Saruman's personal assistant. On the other hand, keeps him up to date on everything concerning the Rohan Kingdom's current situation, what is going on with them, and where are they headed. Saruman dispatches his troops to confront them. Frodo, on the other hand, wishes to assist Gollum but is despised by his companion. Frodo's pal claims that the ring is causing him to become increasingly hostile. He tries but fails to persuade Frodo to listen to him. Gollum was becoming a better man as a result of Frodo's influence. His goodness triumphs over his evil, and he decides to serve Frodo. They see the Dark Lord's troops the next day as they travel. Dark Lord hasn't forgotten about his recent setback. They note, he couldn't afford to waste any more time. They notice the rangers battling the Dark Lord's troops afterwards. Faramir, Boromir's younger brother, led them. They kidnap Frodo and his companion, mistaking them for members of the Dark Lord's army, and they're taking them with them. On the other hand, an army of orcs attacks Aragorn. Aragorn asks the king's niece to assist in the rescue of women and children. He fights alongside the king and this army. They try to save each other after defeating the army. Aragorn is clutching on an army animal during this period. When that orc tries his hand at handling an animal, he fails miserably. Aragorn and his troops plummet from the peaks. Following the battle, Aragorn's companies look for him. When people see Arwen's jewelry in the hands of an orc, they notice. They're all scared that Aragorn is no longer alive and has moved on. Two hobbits and their companions, on the other hand, arrive in an Isengad garden. They saw the Dark Lords and Saruman's huge armies. On the other side, Aragorn's horse notices him injured and drags him away. Arwen was waiting for Aragorn and Rivendell when the scene shifts. Aragorn will never return as she waits in the Middle East. Her father warns her. Even though Aragorn is a human, he asserts that elves live long lives. As he ages, he will die, leaving Arwen alone. Arwen shares her father's viewpoint. On the other hand, the White Witch is preparing to meet humanity because she could see Frodo's army dwindling with each passing day. The army of the Dark Lord is increasing, and it is capable of annihilating humans. They will also have a stronghold in the Middle East. Arwen's father dispatched a force to the region. Faramir realizes that Frodo is Boromir's companion as the scene turns. Faramir's father despised him and wanted Boromir instead. Faramir has Gollum in his grip since he knows Frodo is in possession of the ring. Faramir believes that this is the most effective way of demonstrating to his father that he is his biological son. He decides to take Frodo with him. On the other hand, Aragorn sees the Dark Lord's troops. The King of Aragorn is informed that this force comprises of 1,000 men. That is simply a small portion of the Dark Lord's army. He has dispatched that army to exterminate humans. The monarch has no choice but to fight with the tiniest army he can muster. The king issues a war order to his men. On the other side, that living tree decides to attack Isengard. Rohan's kingdom's residents were afraid. They know they won't be able to win this battle, yet they prepare with some optimism. Aragorn also joins them. It is past time for all good people to get together to resist evil. Elves are now requesting their assistance as well. When the Dark Lord's army comes, a fierce battle ensues. The Dark Lord's army pours arrows down on Rohan's homeland. By injuring Aragorn, they end the castle's war. The army then enters the fortress. Aragorn jumps to his feet and instructs the elves to strike. A new war erupts, and the elf commander is killed in the process. Aragorn and Gimli are the ones who fight them. On the other side, the king secures their gate. They try everything they can to keep the army from approaching the castle. Faramir, on the other hand, comes in Gondor in hot pursuit of Frodo. As I stood there watching everything get annihilated by them, he's trying to figure out who Faramir is. He requests permission to travel to Mordor in order to destroy the ring. Faramir, on the other hand, is deafeningly, 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 deafeningly do. The Dark Lord's army has seized control of half of the realm. Aragorn responds by exiling children and others to a mountain. Following that, Aragorn and the king engage in battle with the army. Gandalf appears as well, sending his army to save Rohan's realm. He makes an effort to help them. Saruman's castle has been encircled by the living tree, which has assaulted him. Frodo, who was supposed to wear the ring in front of the rider, enters the scene. One of his pals, Sam, arrives and intervenes. Faramir protects them by attacking the dragon. Aragorn and the king, on the other hand, 
triumph over the army by fighting it. Faramir is also aware of the truth of the ring's existence. He recognizes Frodo and directs him to the exit. Later, Frodo, Gollum, and Sand depart to destroy the ring. This is where the film comes to an end. 